Good afternoon. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today presenting on behalf of the pharmacy prep team. In this sub-study, our main question was, if given the option of daily oral prep or a long-acting form of prep, what do current oral prep users at private pharmacies in Kenya think they would prefer? We found that most participants thought they would prefer injectable over oral prep, and female respondents thought that among the three prep options, they would least prefer the depivirine vaginal ring. And this is important because it suggests that private pharmacies may reach individuals who are both PrEP eligible and highly interested in long-acting injectable PrEP. As a quick background, like many countries, Kenya has found that delivering PrEP exclusively via traditional health facilities does not meet the needs of all who could benefit from PrEP. Recognizing these challenges, the Ministry of Health, in its 2017 framework for PrEP implementation, identified private pharmacies as one of several channels to which it hoped to expand PrEP delivery. In line with these goals, Kenya's key policy document for guiding the HIV response through 2025 includes a specific focus on engaging the private sector and developing public-private partnerships that could potentially expand HIV service coverage. So we designed a model in which pharmacists and pharmaceutical technologists based in private pharmacies initiate and manage clients on oral PrEP. It was designed with input from key regulatory and professional bodies and organizations involved in direct service provision, advocacy, and research. And I'll quickly walk you through the care pathway. It starts with the client expressing interest in PrEP. In our study, most participants heard about PrEP's availability at the pharmacy from posters that were displayed in the pharmacy, through word of mouth from friends or family members, or from pharmacy providers themselves, whom we trained to initiate conversations about PrEP with clients, especially those purchasing products like emergency contraception, which might indicate that they could be engaging in unprotected sex. If the client wishes to screen for PrEP eligibility, the pharmacy provider does this in a private room. This screening is guided by a standardized checklist which walks the provider through an HIV risk assessment, a medical safety assessment, as well as HIV testing and counseling. The checklist ultimately indicates whether the client is eligible to get PrEP at the pharmacy. At any point, the provider can consult a remote PrEP clinician or refer the client to a nearby clinic. For example, clients who wish to start PrEP but reported a history of kidney issues were referred to nearby clinics where they could undergo further evaluations like creatinine testing to ensure that it was safe for them to initiate PrEP. Lastly, clients are dispensed PrEP according to the schedule laid out in the national guidelines and given a date to return for follow-up. After an initial 12-month pilot of this model at five pharmacies, we expanded to 12 pharmacies, evenly split between Kisumu and Kiambu counties, and conducted a six-month study extension. In this extension, we additionally offered post-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, and pharmacy providers assisted clients with blood-based HIV self-testing. The PEP drugs and the PEP drugs uh, came from national stocks, with study pharmacies procuring them through nearby public health facilities. And whereas in the original pilot study, clients paid 300 Kenyan shillings, or about three US dollars for PrEP services, they received all services for free in this extension. We surveyed clients who were previously dispensed PrEP about their anticipated preferences for long-acting PrEP at their month one follow-up appointment. So in theory, all respondents had at least one month of experience using oral PrEP at the time they were surveyed. We asked all participants about their preference between daily oral PrEP and injectable PrEP, and we additionally asked female participants about the depivirine vaginal ring. We prompted participants to imagine an injection that they could get every two months that protects them from HIV, and we provided some basic facts about the depivirine vaginal ring, including that it can stay in for up to one month, including during intercourse, and that after one month of use, the user can replace the ring herself without needing assistance from a healthcare provider. And here you can see the questions that we asked. Uh, the first question asked of all participants was an either or question. And the second question asked only of females prompted them to rank daily oral prep, a bimonthly injection, and the monthly vaginal ring in order of their preference. We surveyed just under 500 people. Their demographics were similar to those of all other study participants with about half female and under the age of 25 and three quarters unmarried. Around 85% had never used PrEP before enrolling in the study and there was high prevalence of behaviors associated with HIV risk, especially multiple sex partners, sex partners of unknown HIV status and inconsistent condom use. Overall, about two-thirds of participants anticipated that they would prefer getting an injection every two months over taking a daily pill to prevent HIV. 
And when we stratified by age and sex, we saw that this preference was higher among females age 25 and above, uh, of whom about 80% uh, anticipated they would prefer injectable over oral PrEP. We also ran a Poisson regression model clustered by pharmacy to identify correlates of preferring injectable over daily oral prep. And a priori, we decided to include age, sex, and marital status, as well as any variable in our univariate analyses uh, that had a P of less than 0.1. And our final model included the variables shown here. Our model found that being under age 25 was associated with a 9% increase in the likelihood of preferring injectable over oral PrEP, and having initiated PrEP at a pharmacy in Kisumu County as opposed to Kiambu County was associated with a 17% increase in the likelihood of this preference, which wasn't surprising to us given that Kisumu County has an HIV prevalence of about 17%, whereas in Kiambu County it's more around 5%. When asked to rank the three PrEP options in order of preference, nearly 90% of females anticipated that the vaginal ring would be their least preferred form. So on the left, you can see that about 60% thought that their first choice would be injectable, and on the right, about 30% thought their first choice would be oral PrEP. Our findings should, of course, be interpreted with caution. Having only surveyed clients who returned for follow-up, it's possible that those who did not return feel differently about long-acting forms of PrEP. For example, those who discontinued oral PrEP due to pill burden might be interested in long-acting forms of PrEP, but would not have been captured in our study. We also know that other factors like cost will affect real-world uptake of long-acting forms of PrEP, and that client preferences might change with more information and counseling about the different PrEP options available to them. For example, uptake of the depivirine vaginal ring might be higher once clients have a chance to see the ring in person and get answers to questions they might have, such as whether the ring affects fertility. And lastly, when we compare the demographics of clients who accessed PrEP at private pharmacies in our study to those accessing PrEP at public health facilities, we see some interesting differences that suggest that private pharmacies may reach a different demographic of individuals with HIV risk. So we can't assume that the strong preference we saw for injectable PrEP in our study is generalizable to other oral PrEP users accessing it in other settings. Moving forward, when we think about where to deliver long-acting forms of PrEP, our findings suggest that private pharmacies may be a good channel for reaching PrEP-eligible individuals who are, at a minimum, highly interested in injectable PrEP. Our findings also suggest that oral PrEP should still be an option offered alongside these long-acting forms, as some clients will still prefer it. So this is more evidence to support the importance of offering choice to meet clients' needs and engage new clients in PrEP services. And lastly, this study is just a first step towards filling the gap in our understanding of the demand for long-acting PrEP in this setting. But more research is needed to adapt pharmacy models for long-acting PrEP and assess the acceptability and feasibility of delivering it via this channel, including cost. Our team is currently conducting formative qualitative research with pharmacy clients, providers, and key stakeholders to identify potential barriers to delivering long-acting PrEP in this setting. And this work, along with input from the Kenyan Ministry of Health and other stakeholders, will help inform the development of a pharmacy model for delivering long-acting PrEP, which we are planning to pilot um, in Kenya, pending approval of cab LA in-country and product procurement. We'd like to thank all the clients and providers who generously gave their time to participate in our study, our research collaborators, and our study funder, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And if you'd like to learn more about our research, please check out our website using this QR code. Thank you.